Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got some special guests joining us today. We got yes, indeed. From Earn Your Leisure. What's, up, what's, what's going up? on? And we brother? have 19 keys. Welcome. Man, blessing to be here. How are y'all brothers this morning, man? I'm amazing. <laughs> We're great, man. Anytime we get to be here, we great. Absolutely. What, what's, what's your slogan? Black and highly favored? Bless black and highly favored, man. <laughs> That's it. All three. That's <laughs> it. All three. Now, and I'm glad y'all here because there's a lot going on, man. And um, I, I don't know if people understand. Uh, what's happening in Russia and Ukraine is definitely going to impact us here. So it's impacting us here. Yeah. So why has the war, you know, how's it been impacting the global markets? I mean, I'll let everybody speak, but the global market has been down. Mm -hmm. Crypto is down. Stocks are down. Um, oil is at record highs right now. So it's interesting. You know, we just came back from Europe. We was in uh, London, had a crazy event over there. And, you know, just hearing the world news, it, I realized that people listen to news a lot more overseas than they do in America. Like, mm -hmm. even in Uber, like, every Uber is just playing news. They're not playing music at all. They're playing the news. The actual news, not social media, <laughs> yeah, blogs, yeah, like, yeah. actual news. Yeah. Every 10 channels is the news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, it's having, it's having a major disruption. So what's happening now is that inflation is at all-time high. So you're probably mm -hmm. feeling inflation right now if you try to buy a car, if you're trying to, mm -hmm. we just talked about bags, everything, the prices is up. It, there's a supply chain dis disruption that's mm -hmm. still, like, I'm trying to get a picture framed. It took me six weeks to get a picture framed. It took me 10 months to get a couch. It took me a year to get a couch, yep. Yeah. Yeah, so it's crazy. So then you mix that with, you know, a war that just came out of nowhere, still in a global pandemic. So it's a really a recipe for disaster right now, and, and the markets is definitely feeling it. But interesting enough, real estate is still high. Yes, Real estate is still yeah. doing great. Real estate Real still estate high. Is doing, well, yeah. buying is high, but people are spending more for houses. It's and a seller's market. It's a yeah. seller's market, but yeah, but you can still, you can still get some good deals. But the problem is I'm just nervous that when it does drop, all those people that are paying over right now, what happens to them? Those and that's happened before. Working, you know what I mean? Yeah, but that's my fear. When, when, when people, obviously, when, when it's conflicts, obviously people start investing in safe havens. So like bonds is, a, is a, one of those areas. And so when you see bonds going, interest rates will drop. And so we see that now, like interest rates for 30-year mortgage is at 4%, but it's creeping down to 3.85, 3.9. And so when you see, I mean, it's bad that there's a conflict, but there are some sides. So it, like real estate, like you said, that it could be an advantage. Mm -hmm. So like when you, your interest rate drops a quarter percent, that helps you long term so you can refinance and pay less, right? Yeah, so that's absolutely. one of those things. Yeah, now, absolutely. another thing I wanted to ask, since we're talking about what how Russia and Ukraine is affecting us um, and cryptocurrency, right? And we see that Joe Biden is talking about regulating cryptocurrency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This week, we'll see something. So what does that mean? I mean, it could really mean a multitude of different things depending on what kind of policy he lay out. Um, right now, we know that they're trying to do the CBDC coin, mm -hmm. where they got the government back when. Mm -hmm. But they're trying to figure out how to do it because it's really complex right now. That if they roll it out the wrong way and they give themselves the power to destroy money rather than just create money, then you can also see things where they have bank runs, where people decide to take their money out, and then the people have more control over monetary policy than the government. So they're trying to figure out how to create it in the best way, where also it's unhackable, because what's going on with Russia and Ukraine and everything, it's a different type of war. It's an economic and a currency war that's going on. And that's dangerous for a multitude of different reasons. It's the reason why Russia decided to uh, invest in Bitcoin before everything happened. And they can't touch Putin finances right now because he got them layered and secured behind many different invisible walls. And <clears throat> right now, I think the more dangerous thing for people to focus on is understanding how to diversify their assets. Mm -hmm. You understand me? It's like, if you got your money in crypto and it's down right now, you still want to diversify in gold. You still want to have your money in different commodities because the weed and the oil and everything else is rising right now. And so, you know, we got a mental myopia where we only think short term. But in the long term, it's going to affect us even worse because we're already behind the eight ball so far. So when it comes to crypto, you know, if you're going to invest in it, you want to either get at the best prices, which is when it really dropped to the lowest and think from a long term standpoint. The daily trading, that works for people who are very professional. They understand the technical analysis of it all. Mm -hmm. And then they can get in and out of that uh, market and be able to make some money. But in the short term, a lot of people go lose a lot of money. You understand me trying to play it and trying to catch and guess what prices are the best ones to get in. When they really should be finding less volatile things to invest in because you know, you're not going to know how long this thing will play out. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And so with this new currency war, it's creating a completely new global landscape of what money is. Mm -hmm. Like that's the whole thing about what is money, right? Mm -hmm. That's why NFTs are going up in value and cryptocurrency is fluctuating and they're trying to figure out what's gonna be the best hedge right now. But 
the only hedge right now is diversification. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't guess what's going to be the best. You have to diverse and you have to invest in it all. I want to ask you about uh, the Joe Biden executive order again. Um, C, what, 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 is that, what does that stand CBDC. for? Central Central Bank Digital Coin. Yes. So does that mean it's going to be one form of cryptocurrency? Well, that means that the banks. So right now they already have Central Bank Digital Coins. I think in Nigeria, I think it's in Bermuda, right, in 2020. Um, so basically the government is entering their own coin. Mm -hmm. The only thing is it's not going to be backed by anything, right? Mm -hmm. Not even backed by paper currency, essentially. It's just a digital version of a coin. And <clears throat> Swiss Bank was the first bank that issued out banknotes, right? And they've already said by 2030 they go go completely digital, right? And it's the same thing that's happening in China. And interesting enough, China was the first bank to or the first country to issue a currency that wasn't backed by anything besides uh, Genghis Khan, grandson, Kublai Khan said that by the issue of death. Like if you use this or you don't use it, you die. Basically, that's what it was backed by. And so China already, if you go over there, they almost basically completely digital. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So interesting enough, Swiss Bank and China will go be some of the first countries that go completely digital. And so this country realizes that it's harder for them to police monetary policy to control money without them getting into this digital game. So whatever this policy is, is going to try to give the feds more power to be able to regulate. And then it's going to try to get a government more power to be able to tax, but also try not to stifle innovation because America needs that money coming in right now. Mm -hmm. Because of everything that's happening mm -hmm. right now, they got to think about so many different layers of how we control these issues. Because you got the security risk that goes into creating a CBDC coin as well. If it ever get hacked, that just destroys the economy. Mm -hmm. You understand mm -hmm. me? And quantum resistant hacking is what they have to build in there. But what's dangerous for people, if you get the CBDC back coin, that is not transparent. Now it's a relationship between you and the bank. Mm -hmm. You understand me? But now both of y'all can see it. But then at that same thing, they do KYC, where it's know your customer. But then they can also be biased and decide who doesn't get it and who does get it. So that's dangerous as well because decentralization, the whole point of that was take the power out of the central bank hands. Right. But now it's putting the power back into their hands, and that's not good for the people. But let me ask you a question. When we talk about everything going digital, does that help or does that hurt? Because, you know, you got a lot of people that, you know, cash businesses. You yeah. got a lot of people that, that don't put money in the banks. You got a lot of people that pay things in cash. But now it, it feels like it hurts more of us, our community, because... More of the big communities, you know, they they know what they're doing. They can make money. They can flip it. They can put money here and not pay taxes on this, not pay taxes on that. But now you got the the average person, the average Joe Blow that's making money for cash. How does that affect them if they can't use that cash? I think, let me just add my two cents yeah. into that. I'll let you talk about that as well. I feel like um, us as a community, we have a, a bad habit of trying to swim upstream and fight against, you know, a, a, a tidal wave that's coming. Mm -hmm. No matter how we feel about it, this is the future that we're headed into. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that we can really do is prepare ourselves. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. It's never going to be equal. We in America. We black in America. We started off with a 400-year disadvantage. Mm -hmm. We can never expect it to be an equal or fair system. Of course, we got so many disadvantages. But this technology has actually helped to empower a lot of people as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And it could actually be used as a level to level the playing field as well. Right. So I always try to look at things from a more optimistic standpoint as mm -hmm. opposed to being a pessimist. Um, because, yeah, there's definitely going to be some disadvantages. But the good thing about it is that everything that's happening right now, and hopefully we can talk about NFTs and Web 3.0 and all that, this is a unique moment in history. And I was talking to, to 19 yesterday, and I'm like, this moment in history is so vital and people need to understand it. It only happens like every couple of centuries. Yeah, when currency We're, changes. Yeah, like, yeah. You know I mean? like we in a window. It's like a, it's a window when these next five years, if you can educate yourself and get ahead of the curve, you can really, you know, be in the forefront of this thing. If not, you're going to be a digital slave. Yeah. Like that's the new yeah. plantation. A digital plantation yeah. is not going to be a physical plantation anymore like it was 100, 200 years ago. I always, I always yeah. use the analogy like if, if this was a plane that's taken off, right, this new asset class, like you said, doesn't happen very frequently. Our job as a community is to educate as much people as possible so we don't left at the terminal. Some people are so resistant, too. When yeah. you start talking about crypto, they're like, this is a scheme. This can't happen. This isn't going to mm -hmm. work. People are trying to scam you. Yeah. But that's just a lack of understanding. Yeah. Right? And people, been, some of it we, is, though. There is a lot of people. No, there's there's definitely, there's definitely, a lot of, a fact. So there's a lot of scamming, but that's why education always comes first. Right. You know what I mean? Like, safety first. Like, even when I teach, the first thing is to how to protect your money once you get in there. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people like to jump forward without knowing anything because of FOMO. Like, I feel like I'm missing out. There's money that I'm not getting right now, so let me just jump in there. So the mm -hmm. first wave of education first is protecting mm -hmm. 
You understand me? And being risk adverse, right? But if we don't have an understanding, then we let our ignorance lead us. And then we start complaining about things like, I don't like that, but that's only because you don't understand it. Mm -hmm. Same thing with NFTs and crypto. The biggest thing is more so understanding what does the technology do, but we try to understand the technology itself, right? Well, most people don't understand their cell phone, right? But you know how to use it. So for me, the first thing I think about is how can I use this? And is there a use case for the solutions of the diaspora? And if there is, then of course, I'm going to figure out ways that we can become strategic so that we can start implementing this in our business models and the way we start implementing solutions for our empire. Because I look at like, we are in the rise and the falling of empires right now. Absolutely. Right? Uh, we got, you know, Russia and China is figuring out ways to take over Western power and Western power as a, you know, uh, not even growing in population size right now is a telltale sign of America's decline and wane on power. And so they have to figure out multiple ways to be able to maintain power since that's what they've been in for so long. So, you know, at that point, then we have to look at what are our opportunities right now? It's like when we first start teaching options, options give you the option that during the fall of America or the fall of the stock market, you can still make money on the come up side rather than deciding to depend on the government to help you out. You understand me? So for me, when it comes to everything going digital, I don't want everything digital. Nah, I still want land. I still want gold, right? I still want to invest in art. I still mm -hmm. want to diversify my assets because they keep saying by 2053 we're going to have none, but that report is basically saying that we won't own any assets. Mm -hmm. So for me, the quick fix is, well, let's own assets. What will be valuable in the future, not just what's valuable right now? Mm -hmm. And that's what we end up focusing on, what's valuable now. We invest in that. Then as that goes up and down, we continue to lose. Mm -hmm. But they can afford, because they like $10 trillion ahead of us, they can afford to be late on things we can't. We got to jump in or early, experiment, be strategic, be early innovators, and make sure that we get our wealth before things take over. Because if you go study Xinjiang, China, and what they did over there, they early innovators in tech sectors. They get mm -hmm. an early education on what's going to be the most valuable. So when things rise up, then they win. Mm -hmm. So they create millionaires and billionaires easily. So we have to start adapting some wealth standards. That's one of the things that I teach is like, we don't have any standards towards wealth in our community whatsoever, right? But if you study every single other uh, uh, race or group of people, they have standards towards wealth. Specifically the East Asian, they the highest grossing household income, fastest rather. So I wanna study why, right? Family, education, get into early sectors that matter. We get into education, but I always say digital education is a new Harvard. Because even when you get education, we're not the top sectors and engineers, which are the high paying jobs, right? And then when you talk about the jobs that will be valuable in the future, uh, it's the creative jobs. It's the, the coders, the Tech, designers, yeah. the mm -hmm. Web3. Mm -hmm. But we're not getting into that enough. We get on the consumer side. So if we continue to do that, then we're going to be the ones that consistently have to beg another people for job and try to vote our way into progress when we could work our way into it. But Brother 19, I want to ask you a question. You just sparked a question because you said about how China's mostly digital now, right? And yeah. when I look at this Russia-Ukraine war, I say to myself, none of this makes sense. It's got to be a larger play. China is the wild card. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you think? Well, you know, the relationship between China and Russia... They continuously, over the years, you see them getting buddy-buddy. Mm -hmm. Because obviously China wants Taiwan, right? Yep. Russia wants Ukraine. In times of contraction, you think expansion, right? Number one, China has a lot of America's debt, right? And at the same time, that means that China doesn't just want America to fall because the money that they have in America falls as well. Mm -hmm. And then the export into China by raising their dollar and their currency up will make it too expensive to be able to get exports from China. So they have to do everything super strategically first before they can just take over that power. But they've been wanting to take over that power since, you understand me, World War II, right? Especially Russia, seeing America rise in power like that. So we've been at war, whether it's a Cold War, Hot War, however you want to call it. Right now, I believe China is already like the largest economy right now. Right. They've already essentially won. And America's trying to get back in place. Mm -hmm. Right. So America is fighting from the downside. And then Russia wants to be able to take over that whole entire space. But at the end of the day, they just I don't think that they 100 percent knew how strategic they was going to get with the economic war that they placed on them. But mm -hmm. I'm sure that they have things in place like the moment that they decide that the Russians can't watch Netflix <laughs> and can't <laughs> bank with them. Well, they're going to start doing partnerships with China, yeah. right? Strengthening that relationship. Well, let's bank over here. But that gives China more play than anybody because mm -hmm. they're the only ones that really have leverage over Russia and Putin right now. Mm -hmm. So that makes them the biggest power players because they can decide the tide that this thing goes. Yeah, and that mm -hmm. literally happened. So, like, we spoke about this last night. 
Visa, MasterCard, you seen like this economic like ban that's happening with Russia. Mm-hmm. And we spoke about it kind of like we saw MasterCard, uh, they banned it in Russia and Visa banned it in Russia. The first country to step up and say, yo, you can use it here was China. China. So, so the union pay is now something that you can use inside of that country. So it's interesting, right? Like these little things that nobody's paying attention was the, is the big thing you should be paying attention, mm-hmm. right? Because it's like, all right, everybody's banning it and everybody's like trying to support and it's like, all right, well, here's a country that's with the opposition. <clears throat> you can use this here. So like these are the things we got to pay attention pay attention to long term because like you said, it gives more power to a country that is now and it was on pace to be the the, the largest economy in the world. Yeah. And and I think we got to start thinking more, like I'm glad we're having this conversation on more of a geopolitical landscape. Mm-hmm. And it's like a lot of times we just so focused on our day-to-day lives that, you mm-hmm. know, we don't really care too much about stuff that goes on in our neighborhood outside of that. But, um, you know, our day-to-day lives are impacted by what's happening. No, it's extremely, yeah. it's extremely important. Yeah. And it's like even Russia and China, like they're not necessarily, they don't necessarily have the best relationship. Like they've had kind of a, a rocky relationship, but you know, it's the old adage, like, you know, an enemy to my enemy is my friend. Mm-hmm. So they look at it like, okay, you know, this is an opportunity to actually work with, you know, a country that could potentially, you know, be a major threat to America and NATO and Europe. And that's an opportunity for them, right? So if you look at China, it's very interesting because you're talking about the real estate play. Like, they're literally buying land all over the world. You go Mm -hmm. to Caribbean, Africa. There's no place on the world. America. There's no place on the world that China is not, you know, dominating right now, right? So, you know, it's a a new age of imperialism where they're not, like, forcibly taking land Mm -hmm. how, you know, England did and how Europe did um, hundreds of years ago. But now they're, they're doing it to a point where they're putting these countries in so much debt that like in Jamaica, they they own the airport. They put them in mm-hmm. debt for like fifty years. They gotta like lease the airport back to them, and they doing that all over the the world. So you know, it's extremely important for us to start thinking like this and looking at it from you know a big picture because what happens over there affects us over here, whether we you know believe it or not. And we just can't be ignorant to world politics. And I feel like you know America keeps you ignorant, That's and it, it it make you focus on TikTok dances. They make you focus on rap beef. They make you focus on things that's not really important. And when you travel, you understand that these other countries, it doesn't matter how much money you make, they still tapped in. They still mm-hmm. listening. Like mm-hmm. I said, every Uber driver, I noticed that they didn't listen to one music. Mm-hmm. Only thing they listened to was world news. Yeah. So you know, it says a lot about the times that we're in, and we gotta really like you know play catch up because we behind the eight ball already yeah. you know president biden is banning um all russia's energy imports into the u.s uh-huh. right who's gonna benefit from that who's gonna step up and supply that for america so it's it's, it's interesting okay. because now that that puts um opec in in a tremendous you know it's a, it's it's interesting when you look at it because it's like nobody is really clean in this in this world right like nobody's clean everybody has some level of dirt on them so it's like all right now you ban the oil coming in from from Russia, so now that just puts OPEC and the Middle Eastern countries in in a position where they can really monopolize. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They can raise prices. They can do whatever they want, right? And now we we under their thumb even more. So it's like, whose thumb are you under? Right. You're under yeah. China's thumb. You're under Saudi Arabia's thumb. Right. You're under Russia's mm-hmm. thumb. Mm-hmm. And this is why the electric cars is so like that's the that's probably the the real winner in this whole thing. The EV space is like. It's like it's only so long that we can rely on natural resources, period. Yeah. You know, now you're talking about solar energy. So now you're talking about Elon Musk, who has the opportunity to be, you know, the first tr- official trillionaire. They might be already paper, trillionaire, paper. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. First official <laughs> the, trillionaire. Those who own them oil mines <laughs> yeah. and yeah, minerals. Been past that. On, on paper, it. <laughs> because it's like, you know, he, he understood that <laughs> reaching a trillion dollars is not going to be through, you know, conquering land and oil. Reaching a trillion dollars is going to be through electric cars, taking people mm-hmm. into space. Mm-hmm. These are things that, you know, as you said, you going back to the education, mm-hmm. black people, myself included, I went to college, I got a scholarship to play basketball, and I got a communications degree. That happens all the time. Luckily, I'm an entrepreneur. I don't have to rely on that. But there's so too many of us go to school and get liberal arts degrees right and that doesn't mean anything in today's world it's all about technology it's like you have to really understand what you're learning because you could be learning the wrong thing and it's not beneficial that's yeah. a fact yeah. yeah that's the key word understanding right because you know I, I read a lot i take in a lot of information i, I don't necessarily understand it you know yeah i yeah. mean that's the key to it all it's i always say 80 percent mindset 20 percent skill set if you got the right mindset you can master any skill set so even with our folks if i'm gonna teach them high level technology one thing i teach is learning how to learn you understand me? Like the older you get or the newer you get, I always say, your brain changes, right? And because we didn't get the right education in school, once we get older, we have bad learning habits, right? And then when we don't learn something, then we reject it. We either get mad at the teacher or mad at the subject itself, 
right? And we feel insecure within ourselves. So then we look towards distractions. So actually learning how to learn is a way to be able to increase, right, the ability to be able to understand things. Learning the concept and then the details and understanding, like, if I'm 30 years old, I can't learn pattern recognition like when I'm 21, right? And then when I get 40, understanding when your brain changes towards wisdom, right? And more so about concepts. So that's why it's harder for older people to understand technology and things of that nature. They try to get the concept because the details not going to input. So understanding that with our people, like being a much more mathematical people, just in the way that we sync with our thoughts is important. And having these high level conversations is important because oftentimes it's great to simplify things. Right. But there's so much data loss when you do that, you still don't have a true understanding. That's right. Yep. And being a creative <clears throat> learner is something you don't learn in school. Right. Mm -hmm. If you teach the child everything, you spoil them of the ability to learn properly. You understand me? And so a great teacher is always going to leave something out. So it leads you to a journey. You got to be able to investigate and research. They call it research because you search once, then you research again. But now we are overly informed society, but we under execute because it used to be a hard where you got to go to a library and get some knowledge. Right. But that's like I got to walk there. I got to get a library car. I got to take out a book. I got to learn it. I got to bring it back. That's the process. Now you Google something on your phone, there's no work in between that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so you don't appreciate it because mm -hmm. it don't have any mm -hmm. real value. Mm -hmm. And so actually going through the process of learning changes the value that you equate to the things that you learn as well, right? And so it's like we could talk about buying assets or like buying, you know, frivolous things, but how many times we spend money on self-improvement, right, and mental improvement, and so being able to get our people to focus is probably the biggest thing on the planet right now because mm -hmm. we can't focus, right? And even Oh, I we focus on the wrong thing. Yeah. We can't focus. It's just our focus yeah, is, is on the wrong on, thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, highly distracted. I, I think that what you said, like you read, but you don't, you don't really understand it. I think there's a, is you're discounting your learning skill right there because like learning is, is a scaffolding, right? And so you might read something and it says, it'll say like by 2035, zero emissions, right? And it won't click then. Mm -hmm. But when you start hearing gas prices going up, and you're hearing about, wait, this is a natural resource, and how long can it be a natural resource before it's extinct? It'll finally click later on, right? So the, the thing that you're learning is that I need to keep going. I need mm -hmm. to keep reading, mm -hmm. right? The first time I didn't understand it, it, didn't, it wasn't conceptual for me to understand, but now I can go back and pinpoint, yo, I, I've seen this before. Mm -hmm. And so, like, that's what I've done in a sense. It was like, all right, especially when it came to, like, finance, it was like, all right, I didn't understand that. But, like, two years later, I'm like, oh, there goes that reference point that I now needed. So I, and I encourage everybody, like, don't yeah. discount it. Like, keep reading. Yeah. Well, and then also, there's different ways to learn. Going back to the education comment, like, the problem with the school system in America is that they only f focus on one way of learning. That's but there's, fact. like, 12 different ways to learn. And, I, like, reading is not the way that everybody learns. Me, personally, I listen to more audio books. Shout out to Audible. What? I listen to more <laughs> audio books <laughs> than I actually part. read because I retain the information a lot better if I hear it than if I actually read it. And I, I, I learn a lot from conversation. So now we in a day and age where you can learn from podcasts. Mm -hmm. You can you can learn from YouTube. You can learn from having conversation. You can learn from audio books. And that shouldn't be discounted. It shouldn't be discredited. You don't necessarily have to learn from just traditional reading because a lot of people are not reading. And mm -hmm. they're getting discouraged because they don't have time to read or they, their learning style is not you know comprehensive to that. And then they get diagnosed with learning disabilities. And mm -hmm. that's a whole different conversation. But there's a lot of different ways to learn. And, you know, you have to actually, A, learn how you need to learn. You got to right. diversify how you learn to go back to what you That's said about fact. finances. Because I do all of that. I'll read and I'll have the information. But then I hear brothers like yourselves talking. I'm like, oh, that's what I was reading about. Exactly. But I yeah. know y'all exactly. got an understanding of it. So yeah. now I can ask questions. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and then what you do after you read and learn is important. Check. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of times people talk and they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And sometimes people think they know what they're talking about or they you know, taking people down the wrong lane mm -hmm. and people are confused. That's why up here, we try to make sure when, when people come up here, we try to make sure that they come recommended by somebody that actually knows what they're talking about. Because mm -hmm. you can come up here talking about something, whether it's NFTs or crypto or real estate or anything, and they don't know what they're talking about and people believe it because they want to believe. People want right. to make money. Mm -hmm. They want to invest, you know what I mean? Well, Ernie Leisure hasn't missed yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, they bring some great 19 keys. Yeah. Like, Even know, what you saying, people. like that fact yeah. check process is like, I'm going to fact make sure that that is truth, right? Like, mm -hmm. you're learning in yourself right mm -hmm. there. Like, all right, I want to make sure I understand this completely to see if they knew what they were talking about. Absolutely. So that's, a, I mean, that's just another but, way to But people don't learn. do that. Even Wikipedia. Wikipedia, yeah, yeah. Just, you, anybody yeah. can it's make that. It's some bullshit. Yeah, 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 yeah,
you can find faults in everything because everything is some level of an opinion based, right? Mm -hmm. So like how I can explain the sky, right? And my explanation of the sky could be different from his explanation to a sky. And if you're an alien and you never saw the sky ever, then you might not know. It's not to say that what I'm saying is wrong or what he's saying is wrong. It's just different interpretations, right? So that's why it's important to get different views from different people. Mm -hmm. Even in media, it's extremely important because it's like we listen to media and we just trust what the media says. But the media is biased. So we get in, we get in a point of view from the Western point of view. That's a fact. So a, even with this Russia-Ukraine, there's three, propaganda. There, there's three sides to every story. Mm -hmm. They talk about Russia's propaganda, but what about America's propaganda? Oh, all, man. Come on. Almost all of the news that we see around war is propaganda. I mean, it's legal propaganda at the same time. You understand me? That during wartime that they don't have to tell the truth. They have a military branch that's a uh, PSYOP yeah. where, where they create this propaganda and wage psychological warfare on people. And so that's why it's dangerous to be able to intake so much news because then you're just being controlled by whatever the government wants you to think. And then you don't go into any critical analysis or more in-depth thought. So anybody who does their own real research, then you feel like they the ops. You feel like they conspiracy thinkers because they actually critical thinkers. And so that process is dangerous because a low-level observer controlled by what they see, a high-level observer controls what they see. And so we become just reactionary to everything, and we don't put out anything for the world to react to. That's kind of how we are as a diaspora. We are as a people. You understand me? And so for me, it's about controlling the narratives. You understand what, me? What about I always NFTs? feel like you could find anything to support whatever it is you want to. All day long. Yeah. And, it's confirmation bias. And we were talking about in the New York Times, they did a whole article about how in Russia, a lot of people who live there don't even believe that there's a war going on <laughs> in Ukraine. And like people are talking about how they're talking to family members that they have in Russia and their family's like, there's nothing going on there. It's just a military operation. But, you know, if you read that article, they talk to one family. No, they talk to one exactly. family yeah. in the article. It exactly. actually says <laughs> that what they say. They say we're not saying that they don't know it's a war going on. They think that it's a special military operation. But they're talking to one family. But in that I saw whole in article. the news they were there was actually somebody there talking to people on the ground, like several different people who were like, "No, there's not a war going on." But because the news, the news in Russia is not allowed to say it's a war going on. Mm -hmm. They don't say it yep. in Russia. They say a special mm -hmm. military operation, right? And then they're not showing any. They're not showing any of those things. And everything that I, they which they I mean, talk both is true. It is a special military yeah. operation mm -hmm. yeah but also we could we could <laughs> yeah. go to, we, could, we could go to any neighborhood in america and pick a random selection of 10 black people and have them say the most ignorant things on earth and then report this is how black people are in america yeah so we got to be careful with that because it's like it's extremely important to understand that there's always some level of an ontario motive mm -hmm. nothing is like 100 percent bias free there's some level of bias put in place, whether it's good bias or bad bias, there's some level of bias put in place. And it's like, if you need to rally support for a military operation for a war, the best way to rally support is to make the other side look as bad as mm -hmm. possible. Now, exactly. I'm not I'm not like saying like Russia is good in this, but I'm just saying like, that's just the truth in it. So it's like, there's always three sides to the story. Their side, our side, and the truth. And somewhere in the middle usually is the truth where it's like, okay, they have a point, they have a point, where do we meet in the middle? Because right. that New York Times article just scratched from the fact that thousands of people are getting arrested in Russia every day for protesting against the war. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, uh, yeah, and, exactly. and there's no way we can verify. I think that's the most dangerous thing about it all. Mm -hmm. Like, if we can't verify it, then we still left to somebody else to control and manipulate our viewpoint. You understand me? And so that's why, like, media is the most important, I think, of all. Y'all you, had Dr. Claude Anderson on here. But Love when him. you have control of media, then you can control what the minds think. You can control the agenda for generations to come. It's like even with NFTs, cryptocurrency, Web3, It's if somebody say, yo, 80, like all the NFTs are a scam, they're going to be correct in a certain aspect, right? That 80% of them that's on the market are scams. Because anytime you got a new market that pops up, it's going to be bad actors that scam in whatever other industry that they was previously in. They go jump into this because they see opportunity that suckers are getting in without education. Right. But then you got people that look at it and say, OK, most of the NFT projects that have real utility are the ones that are real valuable that you actually build in like a business. It's just another technology that you can use to increase your business, to be able to earn cryptocurrency, to be able to do implement creative business models that normally weren't possible. Right. And also to be able to capitalize on secondary markets. Right. And systems that validate transactions. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you said that, you know, and that that's that was my biggest fear with cryptocurrency and NFTs. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in, in this game, people feel they, they taste they taste the blood. Right. So mm -hmm. They taste the money. So people a lot of times they will pitch to our people 
what yeah. they think is good, right? Mm-hmm. And they'll do it in a, in a bunch of different ways. They'll use uh, uh, influencers. They'll use celebrities. Yeah. They'll use people that, you know, here's a quick check. Say this NFT is popping. Mm-hmm. Here's a quick check. Say this cryptocurrency is popping. And my fear is our people who are trying to catch up, like we said in this interview, who don't necessarily know. And right. they try to Google. They try to read. It, it's, it's not understandable because it's not something that they learn. And they wind up putting their money into these NFTs that are scams. Mm-hmm. And these cryptocurrencies that are not worth anything. And now they have a problem. Now they just lost all their money that they don't have. Right. So break down NFTs, what NFTs are good, what NFTs are not, what if people want to invest in NFTs, which way they should go, wh- where they should be looking. Right. And the same thing with cryptocurrency, because like I was saying the other day, the fact that right now EYL could be like, you know what? I got a cryptocurrency. It's called EYL currency. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can have a currency. 19 keys currency. Charlemagne, the God currency. Good idea. Good idea. You know what I mean? <laughs> but what matters? What's worth it? Because everybody, right. you know, money scheme, you know what I mean? And it's well, like, what's worth it? Well, what is worth it? I mean, at the end of the day, when we talk about human beings and how we perceive value, like money is based on a belief system. Mm-hmm. You understand me? That a bunch of people believe is valuable, so therefore it is, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of these marketing schemes are based on supply and demand, Right. Over enthuse marketing, get people in the community, uh, throw them a bunch of triggers. Hey, you gonna win five thousand here? You gonna win a car here? You gonna win the Lambo here? You know, all of them are all scams. First of all, mm-hmm. like no business. Like think about it. This is a business, and no business is gonna start off like that. I'm gonna give you a Lambo if you buy into my product. That don't make sense. Where's the first place people go to? To those scams? Yeah, because you know we operate through reward or punishment. If I see a bunch of people getting rewarded for something, that's how you start to prime human behavior. Mm-hmm. You understand me? It's called tokenomics when you're talking about cryptocurrency, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. It was a psychologist by the name of B.F. Skinner to where he wanted to figure out how he can tokenize human behavior. It's, if you think about you getting a sticker for a test, you understand me? Then that makes you want increase those endorphins. So next time, well, I want that sticker. I'm going to do good on that test. Mm-hmm. Or you do something last minute where it's like, damn, well, I know the reward that if I actually do this homework in the next two hours, then the reward is I get finished. I don't get my ass whooped by my parents or something. So therefore, I'm going to do it. Tokenizing human behavior has always been a psychology of marketing and why human beings adapt to certain things. We do everything for reward. Employ- employee of the month. Yeah, yeah employee yeah, yeah. of a month, of grade month. systems. <laughs> yeah. All of those different things. Every single thing we do is almost tokenization. So in cryptocurrency, the good ones that have tokenomics, they're figuring out ways how to control human behavior and get them to consistently buy in and to stay in this ecosystem of a cryptocurrency. Now, when you first get in, like some of the basics of understanding these cryptos is understanding the followers or the developers that are docs. So if you don't know who's behind it, right, then you most likely shouldn't buy into it because they should have a track record. You should be able to look at their LinkedIn or look at what businesses that they developed before. If there's a celebrity that is promoting a project, yet they did nothing else in that Web3 space, you know that they just got a check to push that out there. They know nothing about it. Whatever reputation, talent, skill that they have is not attached to what they're promoting. So that doesn't matter. Right. And they're also taking advantage of a lot as well, because if I'm coming to you regular opportunities, hey, promote my car, you get paid now promote this NFT. But they don't understand the laws and regulations behind it. So they're doing it like a regular business transaction. I'm an influencer. I'm influencing. They don't realize the full scale operation behind it, that there's a bunch of guys in rooms capitalizing off people ignorance. Right. So they're utilizing your platform to take percentages of the people that's ignorant enough to be able to tap in and follow you. So you really want to look at projects that have real value. Like for me, I want if I'm gonna buy into an NFT, right? Number one, I want to look at what is the utility behind it, mm-hmm. right? I got a project called Crown Society. It's simple. You buy one of the digital crowns, you unlock a physical crown, right? Or you get access to a course or a community. That's a simple. Okay, how long has Keys been doing this? He been doing it. He been selling these crowns for seven years. So why all of a sudden would he risk his business operation by dropping an NFT project that he got rug pull, right? Somebody that just started a project, they just jump in, then all of a sudden they have no business credential behind them, no reputation, no trust, none of those things. That's not a reason that you should buy in. Or you can be honest with yourself because there's first and secondary market when it comes to trading. So now most of the times you go get into a good project, they got what they call a whitelist, right? To where you have to buy into or you have to do something that gets you on a list to be the first person that buy, then you can sell to the secondary market, Right. If most of the time you're not on that white list, you're overpaying for something that doesn't have real value, right? And probably the most dangerous thing is that we take all of our influence and then we give it away for free almost, right? When it came to the Board Ape Yacht Club, Invisible Friends, or any of these projects, we couldn't wait to 
go ahead and shill them out to the community. Shilling is the process when you own one and then you're trying to convince everybody else to mm -hmm. buy into mm -hmm. it. Yeah, that's when you see everybody right? turn their meme into it. Everybody <laughs> turn their meme. But they don't realize on the back end, other communities are getting millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. So while we think we jumping into a, a phrase or a, a, a trendy thing, we literally paying somebody else's community, ignoring everybody else. I have yet to see black influencers or creators push out black projects. You understand me? Like, okay, there's real artists, right? Even so, like, with the NFT space, you really don't even want to think about, like, like I said, this is why I don't, don't teach it in the capacity to where it's like, if you have a business right now, you sell a product, you sell a book, right? You sell real estate. Somebody has sold an NFT as real estate, right? Mm -hmm. By connecting the NFT to an LLC that owns the property, mm -hmm. right? So you're not directly buying it, but you're indirectly buying it by getting access to this. And then there's a smart contract that says that the agreement is whoever buys this owns the LLC. And if the LLC owns it, then you buy product on that now. And then they haven't built the platforms to allow every single one of these things to work out. But the way I taught my students was simple. And number one, this is probably one of the best use cases of the blockchain thus far for everybody to tap into. And it's a way for people to earn cryptocurrency, right? Because you only think about buying crypto, you don't think about earning. My brother Slice from Biggest Crypto Play Ever told me that, and I ran with it. Because even during this time, I'm not thinking about trading crypto, I'm thinking about earning, right? So if you have a product right now, I look at the NFT as a product picture, right? And what it unlocks is the product. Right now, if you go on the website and you buy a product, you don't buy the product image, you just buy the product. The mm -hmm. NFT is essentially buying the image and the product as well if you get a utility behind it that it unlocks something. So a lot of people right now, I see, you know, the Gary V's of the world and different people, they making hundreds of millions of dollars by tokenizing and gamifying their communities. And celebrities and influencers and leaders can all do the same thing if they understood the opportunity that they're missing out on right now. Beyond the scamming and all of that, like that's in every single industry in the world. Mm -hmm. Like you're not gonna take that out. So right now, I think NFTs will go through what they call a cold winter, where a lot of them go drop in value. And I think that's the best time where you can see real projects. Because it's harder to sell out a project by just FOMO. Now people are like, all right, because the community is getting more educated every time they go through a rug pull, every time somebody scam them. Mm -hmm. So they want to see what's the real project, right? We just announced that we're gonna be doing a project with EYL where, you know, and I, I can let them drop if they want to drop some utility <laughs> on that. But the simplification is, is that if you already sell a product, why not sell it on the blockchain? Number one, uh, there's no refunds or chargebacks on the blockchain, so I know a lot of people like that. You understand me? But number two, right, now you have a connection between all your customers and also become a membership. And you can start setting up that secondary royalty system, which I know the the labels and the music industry has messed up so many people yeah. over the years from. And our industry as well. So we can't really afford to ignore these things, especially if we want to talk about building wealth and taking technology as a way to be more effective in the way we go about doing it. Because we're too far behind that if we do everything that everybody else does, we still lose. What about buying real estate in the metaverse? Now, I, that's one. I think, I, I think the metaverse real estate is an interesting play because people still don't fully understand like the metaverse, right? And they're mm -hmm. looking at it like this doesn't make any sense. And um, I actually just put on Instagram a couple days ago that um, the the Russian dollar was worth like I think one penny in America. Mm -hmm. The dollar collapsed. The ruby. The, 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 yeah, the ruby. And um, rubbish. so Robux. <laughs> <laughs> the ruby with rubbish. the rubbish. So Ro <laughs> Ro Ro Roblox, had, Roblox, the video game, has a currency called Robux. Yep. And um, that currency is like mm -hmm. a penny, like in twenty five. Like so, it's yeah. actually worth more than the Russian dollar. So now it's an interesting dynamic when you have a video game's currency that's only good for the video game, right? Can't use it anywhere else except for the video game. And you can buy, you know, stuff for your your avatar and things of like that is worth more than a, a currency where Russia has $144 million, it has over 100 nuclear weapons, it's a world power, been around forever. So now it's starting to make more sense to people where it's like, okay, this digital world <laughs> is really running parallel with the physical world. And it's not so much of like, you know, people like saying like, oh, you're in the matrix and you, you're going to live there forever. I mean, that could potentially happen, anything can happen. But it's more so of a reality of escape. 
escapism, right? So it's the same thing as watching television. It's the same. People have always played games since the beginning of time, whether it was chess, Mm -hmm. whether it was soccer, whether it was basketball, whether it was, you know, PlayStation, whether it was watching TV, whether it was Netflix. This is the next evolution of that. And being that that is the case, there's going to be a lot of opportunities in the metaverse for not only clothing, and like we talked about Ralph Lauren, mm-hmm. we talked about um, Dolce Gabbana, yeah. Gucci, all of these. Value uh, trademarks. Yeah, yep. those Nike. Nike. Yeah. Um, yeah. The physical land as well, because it's like we took, we went to the metaverse. Uh, shout out to Chitalia, and she showed us. So now all this stuff comes together, right? So we took a trip into the metaverse, and she showed us um, her property which is beachfront property, which we actually found out beachfront property is actually the most valuable thing because you can actually build on the water. Yeah, you can build, like, there's there's like regulations. You, you can, can build out to the water. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Your, your property, let's just say, is like 6,000 square feet. That's just the physical property of the land, but as far as the water goes out, you can build on top of it. So, like, the dude had a football field on the water. He had a basketball court. Mm-hmm. Then he had a yacht. And inside of the yacht, when you're talking about this digital space, like, the yacht became, like, a place for people to go where he could throw parties. And inside of it, he has events inside of his yacht. Yeah. And so now people can come on the property. They can walk on the football field. They can play hockey. Yeah. They can go into the yacht, and now there's an event inside of it. And the NFT can be your ticket. Well, to let me. So let me. Yeah. Let me. So, so let me. So let me. Let me so so I. Right, so you in the metaverse, right? You got a house in the metaverse. So we walked. We we going into the house. He has an art gallery inside of his house. What is he selling? He's selling NFTs. What do you, you you have to use cryptocurrency? to buy the NFTs. So now you got the metaverse, you got NFTs, you got cryptocurrency all lining up, right? So now you can understand when we talk about web 3.0, it's all coming together. Mm-hmm. Where it's not like just some, you know, crazy idea in somebody's brain, it's actually things that can make sense. And now we looked at Travis Scott's concert that he did mm-hmm. uh, in Fortnite mm-hmm. um a couple years ago and he had like 50 million people with that cuz they forced every person in Fortnite to watch the concert, right? So now it's like that's a new way now you can have artists. So now you can buy clothes and merch and stuff you, and, and, and the, the, dress adverti- yourself. the advertisement side as well cuz if you own a property and there's 50 million people coming in, advertisers will pay for the advertising space. Right. Mm-hmm. You understand me? And then what streams in the metaverse counts as real streams in real life? So like my bro Blockchain Bully hosts a class inside the metaverse where he teaches people stocks. So anytime that they watching it on their YouTube, he's getting his channel going up. You understand right. me? To where it's like right now, the metaverse is already active, right? I know there's a lot of people, they complain on Instagram about the metaverse, but Instagram is meta, right? And right now, the metaverse is really just talking about meta meaning beyond future, right? And the verse is talking about the universe, but it's really talking about the future play of the internet where it goes from social media, then it goes to a more immersive cycle Mm -hmm. to where instead of just looking at the phone, you are in the phone, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And then there's different ways you can interact with it where you ain't gotta have goggles on your face. You can do spatial reality or augmented reality where it's not as immersive and you're still connected into real life, right? Like um, Idris Sandu just has a, uh, has something that he came out with where it's more so virtual uh, screen to where you can be in the metaverse, but you have it on layered on top of physical space. So the whole brain is not tapped in. But then the metaverse provides different opportunities when it comes to being educational as well. To be able to immerse yourself in that space, they say that people remember and learn more in those immersive spaces, right? It's about empathy training for, uh, 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 they doing it right now in hospitals that if, they did a training to where the people is in an old folks home, right? And their avatar was of an older person. So they said that it increases the empathy for older people. So now it changes the relationship that they have when they're working, right? And then ideally, they will want to do that towards like races and things of that yeah. nature. Now, and, I, and I training, don't get metaverse that much power. Yeah, we, we, training we, for war, too. <laughs> yeah, we, had, we had that conversation yeah. like a few months ago. Yeah, like, PTSD. Think too. about it from an educational standpoint where now it's not a history book that you have to read. You can literally see the scene. Come on now. You mm-hmm. can be walking we through it. We get Black Egypt again. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. now it, it's not something that you have to read. You can actually experience. Now that empathy and that education has changed. You the, know what I'm saying? Forever. The, the crazy thing is the future be right in front of people's faces and they still can't see it. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, I was talking about this like, like 10 years ago, I'm like, what's next? Because I understood that when social media came, it changed everything, mm-hmm. right? But I'm like, social media is not going to live forever. What's going to be next? And I couldn't figure it out. And now I'm seeing that this Web 3.0 is the next evolution of mm-hmm. what we currently look at as social media. And it, it's not going to be something that's going to be a drastic change where you just lock yourself in chambers. Mm-hmm. It happens it happens. Time. It happens so slowly that you don't realize it, and it Unless happens. You when watch you, movies. It happens with young people, if, yeah. or, or if you pay attention. Right. If you pay attention, <laughs> or if you pay attention to children. So that's how I learn a lot. Like when I realized that YouTube was the wave and not television, is when I realized that my son 
had no idea. He didn't have any favorite television channel. Mm -hmm. He only had favorite YouTube channels. Mm -hmm. He's watching YouTubers that's playing video games. He's like they're taking video of themselves playing video. That's right. And he's watching like you know what I'm saying. That's so right. it's like so now when you realize like every week he's asking me for forty dollars for Robux or <laughs> you know Fortnite skins and it's like all right most parents they just giving their kids the money they're not really thinking about it but I'm looking at like this is something that it's already happening with children whether it's Fortnite whether it's Robux they are literally spending real money mm -hmm. to buy things and then it's like if they don't have it if they if that 2k player doesn't have you know the the, the tattoos and all that right. then they get cyber bullied yeah. because they don't have the skills or yeah. they don't have the the, the uniform it's it's an it interesting dynamic real, it's the same thing in the real world it's the reason why we wear what we wear mm -hmm. right we it's, it's our first form of expression before mm -hmm. i ever say anything you look at what i'm wearing and so like in that space it's the same thing right like i'm a, i'm gonna try to stand out i'm gonna have to get that new skin yo dad if i don't get it I'm not the cool guy anymore. Right. And so it becomes a, another way to, to earn income. But we're not thinking of it. We're just kind of subconsciously doing it. Like, yo, yeah. here's $10. Here's $10. I fought it for a minute, though. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> not me. Cause, 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 my six-year-old is all in the Robux. That's the only Mine thing that too. can keeps her calm. Like, <laughs> if you don't do this, you're not playing Robux this Sunday. Because I only let her play it on Sunday. Mm -hmm. She gets right now, to it. Now, but one I can thing I want to say. I'm giving my son, you know, which I had to break down because it's like, I couldn't understand giving my son real money for fake clothes. He's buying fake clothes that in a year he's not even gonna care about it no more. Right. You know what I mean? So I could not understand it, but mm -hmm. that was the one thing that he wanted to do. And yeah. I had to say, you know what? If that makes you happy, that's what it is. But let me ask you, like oh, is like, he gonna care about the real clothes though in a year? Uh he cares about the real clothes because he gotta go to school. But okay, he also okay. cares about the fake clothes because he's playing the game. <laughs> yeah, okay, 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 but you okay. know what? My, my whole thing is is also and I know you got to leave. I know we've been here for a minute. When it comes to things like that, so we talk about our communities, right? And we always talk about sometimes our communities can't afford food, right? They can't afford mm -hmm. the gas prices. They can't afford a lot of the things in real life. Yeah. yeah. But if they can't afford it in the real life, yeah. how do they have money to buy a, a house on waterfront? You know. Well, what I, mean? I don't think you. Or, I, I, I don't think that you should. Mm -mm. I don't think you should buy a waterfront property in Metaverse <laughs> yeah, before you have a real house. Mm -hmm. I think that you should always. <laughs> I, I think I think you should be aware, educated, and you know that's an extreme example. But you know I think that from another standpoint, we got to always stop looking at things from a consumer lens. Like what you just described was a consumer lens. Mm -hmm. Now, if we reverse it, mm -hmm. what if we look at it from an entrepreneurial opportunity lens, where it's to say, okay. That small business that doesn't have enough money to have a, a storefront mm -hmm. in Brooklyn or Queens or Harlem, mm -hmm. right? Now, not only can she sell clothes online, but that's still costing money because you actually have to get the clothes printed. Right. It's going to be even cheaper to sell virtual clothes in the metaverse. Right. Mm -hmm. Sounds crazy until it happens, right? And it's already happening. So it's like... Yeah, we definitely have to focus on real, but that's that's like a major critique where it's like focus on this, focus on land. Yeah, we have to, we have to, but we also gotta look at the opportunity side. We 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 can't as long as we're gonna be consumers, we're always gonna be broke. Right. We're always gonna be in the situation that we're at now. The only way to change our situation is to do something drastically different. Look, we are a hundred points down in this game. If it's like basketball, like we a hundred points down in the third quarter. You, you're not going to win by just continuing to make layups. You got to start shooting threes. Mm -hmm. You got to start making drastic changes, like whole lineup changes. Fire the coach. And these are things that we got to start, you know, thinking, what is the opportunity? Everything that we see, we should say, what's the opportunity? Right. What's the entrepreneurial opportunity? What's the investing opportunity? Not just, you know, what's the consumer opportunity? It has to be about ownership, right? Every part of the, every part of the conversation has to be about ownership. It's cool. That's why I really like to talk about the names of different platforms. Because I'm not trying to give them a platform. They're already making millions and billions of dollars. And each one of these things is such so new right now that we can employ our capital and our dollars, get with different developers right now and build the same exact thing. They're really not that hard, especially after they built. It's open source to where you can take that same exact script and build it yourself and then tweak it in a better way. Right. Like instead of you taking money to be able to push out an NFT or push cryptocurrency or push a metaverse, you should think about how can I create my own? I like what Snoop is doing with his son because his son giving them the game and then he giving them the go ahead to go and implement based mm -hmm. on that. And he's making 50 to 100 million dollars ASAP. So I would think about everybody should take that as a success blueprint. Number one, it's also a way to where you can extend your legacy with your child. Your child can't do what you do, but they understand this space more. So be like, you know what? Mm -hmm. Teach me how I can add this onto my business model, mm -hmm. right? So therefore, I think that what he's done, because family is always at the beginning of when we talk about wealth, 
Without family, we have nothing because we can't build generational wealth. And I always say don't do business without family, right? And so when it comes to that capacity, we have to think about ownership, ownership, ownership. And that's why we was talking about having an incubator space with people that are into Web3, into coding, into engineering, and working with them to build out the projects. I have a lot of celebrities and people that want to tap in and do things, but there's a lack of developers in our community. We got to outsource to different countries, right? We got to work with people who don't look like us. Instead, how about we focus on the education process where people are learning Web3. Now they have a skill set that they can build wealth on, especially in this new landscape. So if we focus on the future changing, then we have to get the education to change the future for ourselves. Otherwise, we're going to be stuck asking somebody else's vision to control where we go next. And that's the worst thing that I hate seeing is that when we ask about the future, we never have a plan. And that's the one thing. Before, but I want to make sure I say this before I forget. We was talking yesterday, me, yeah. and, me and 19 yesterday, and I'm like, yeah, we could drop. We're going to drop an NFT, and, and that's dope. But I feel like we're in a unique situation to really affect change. Yeah. So I'm like, how can we have a bigger change? So what we're going to do is, and we'll be announcing as soon as have, you know, a, a whole incubator for the brightest in our community for Web3 development for NFTs, for crypto, for, you know, everything that has to do with Web3. And we want, you know, people that's, you know, in Harvard, people that's in Howard, people that's in, you know, Bethune-Cookman, people that didn't go to college, right, mm -hmm. but still brilliant and bright. Because I feel like too many times we focus on people that don't necessarily need the help and we focus on celebrities. So like, you see these billionaires and they always... They're hanging around celebrity rappers, yeah, right? Stop doing that. And it's like, no, nah, stop doing that. Because it's like, no, no disrespect to the rappers, but it's like they need us, we don't need them. We, That's the whole point. We we have a we have we why not go to the brightest in our community, right? That have been overlooked. They need the they need to be so if you're really trying to uplift the culture, why don't you go to the to the tech genius that's in Morehouse that's struggling to just pay his tuition, right? like every a rapper that sells 20 million records. Yeah, he needs mentorship, but he's not the first person in line. Like, they're always the first person in line when you see these billionaires. Gotta get our brain it's always together. the rappers, right? Mm -hmm. But that's a whole different conversation. So instead of complaining about... the billionaires want to look cool and rappers want to look ultra yeah, rich. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the that <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, like, that's so, who I need to be so that, so, with. So that's, that's the new wave. That's the new wave that we on. And, and like, you know, when we look at Earn Your Leisure... You know, it started as a podcast, but now it's a media company. Y'all a fucking media company, a movie. Big media company. Y'all yeah. are so necessary for the community, yeah. man. There's not too many people I enjoy hearing from as much as I hear from y'all. I appreciate it. I want to say one last thing, because we talked about the metaverse, and I know a lot of people think about the, the, the side of mental health space, right? People always hit me with that, because they know I'm deep on the mental side. So at the end of the day, you know, you got to go into a balance and abundance mindset. Anybody that has a problem with social media, metaverse, and any of those things, one of the biggest things I don't see us do is going into nature as a people. You understand me? When I go hiking and when I'm outside, it's way more Caucasians and other folks than it ever is us. And, you know, in my book, I talk about city thinking versus nature thinking. And in nature, right, that's the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, that's when we have our most creative thoughts away from man's machinations, where our, our brain can be free, it can release the thoughts, and we can hear that inner voice. But we so consistently surrounded by the frequency of trauma and what you do frequently becomes your frequency. So if we consistently on a negative basis, then all we have is inducing ourselves with the same thing over and over. But when you go into nature, you observe in light, you understand me, you're taking your shoes off, you're grounding, you're allowing your body to be able to tap into that negative energy, balancing out that positive ion within your body. Then your body can start decreasing that inflammation within the body and within the brain. So we can't complain about metaverse while being on social media. We have to have better habits, right? And that's going to be up to us as human beings because the market don't care about your mental health, right? And I believe that these are ways that we can start to increase our focus to where we can actually start to educate ourselves because you will not go scroll for 10 hours and then say, okay, I'm about to learn now. Your brain won't even be able to tap in after that, <laughs> right? And so you got to be able to fast. You got to be able to detox. You got to be able to take a walk around the block. When you talked about learning and then trying to understand, it's not just about what you do while you learn, it's what you do afterwards. Mm -hmm. Like you should go exercise so that your brain can start connecting the dots. You have to allow your brain some time to breathe. And sir, we know that we not a people that's on a circadian rhythm because we don't own our time. We are nine to five people. So we got to get back to a natural time. We got to get back to our natural selves if we ever want to tap into that God, that mind of God. And that's and that diet, mind where we diet, focus. Diet, diet is extremely important. important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Diet is everything. Listen, mm -hmm. we can't talk wealth with our health. Like, you know, I, I, of course, I have a, a health business that I'm known for with like Goldwater and, 
Claudia Silvers and like uh, uh, New Tropics and things of that nature. And the reason I did that is because as I try to teach people high level technology and democratization of technology and things of that nature, and high level concepts, can't understand it, can't focus. So the brain needs stimulants, right? Especially we in a world where we're over chemicalized and under mineralized, right? We have to get back to the mineralization and our people that's melanated, we solar deficient. And we live in environments where we targeted by the zip code and even the air quality is not good for us, right? If we talk about cryptocurrency to really be a solution, we can start creating DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations, to where we can start targeting those zip codes and we can start decreasing those food deserts, right? By saying, let's all put our money together, then everybody that buys into it, instead of having a pyramid structure like a LLC or a corporation, is circular economics to where the community governs what happens. So now we can say, okay, we put in $50 million, well, let's vote and decide where that money goes. Mm -hmm. Right. And so once we do that, we can target all of we can buy up farms. We can have that cryptocurrency inside that DAO to where each person has governing rights. Because I always say, you know, and, and, and no disrespect to the, the, the political process, but poor people vote, rich people lobby. Right. We got to put our money where our mind is. Otherwise, we lose. You understand me? And so once we do that, we got to say, what are all our problems? And I look at blockchain as a way to where you can think about every single problem, whether it's the crime in Chicago and you say those people in that vicinity that are in the highest crime rates, what if we airdrop them cryptocurrency if the crime decrease? Now you're incentivizing those people for better behavior, right? Without doing those things, without changing the economic condition, without changing the food conditions, without changing none of this, none of this shit that we talk about matters yet, That's right. right? Because we have to be able to get the lowest caste system to the highest if we want to create our own world. And so we have to have a vision for it, but our people walk around without vision, without solutions. Without vision, you blind. And without solutions, then you just become problematic. And so I want us to be able to think about for every problem we have, there's already a pre-existing solution, like there's already pre-existing conditions in our community. So that's my message to everybody right now, man, is to be able to tap in and learn who you are, study, because knowledge itself is about the study of self. But you're talking about a generational change, but it yeah. starts now. Yeah. It starts now, it starts and right it's now. not that hard as we make it. That's right. But if you don't start, the next step is always execution. Anybody, somebody come to me, you done listened to 50 hours of 19 Keys, and then you still ask me a question, what should I do next? Execute on the information, because we truly lack execution. We don't get started, and that's a decrease in our willpower, right? A lot of men, you know, it's a lot of soy boys out here, so everybody ain't got that testosterone where they're willful to where they can commit to something, focus on it, and execute. And we have to be able to get out our feelings because we're at war, Right. There's economic war going on, spiritual war, psychological war that's happening every single day. And we don't have the ability to lead ourselves. And we always looking for another savior. And other communities use education and family and technology and their cultural rights and rituals as their savior, rather than looking for the next black man or woman to step up and lead us. That's real. Listen, hold up, before they go, I want y'all to talk about uh, South by Southwest activation. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you want you want to start it? Yeah. yeah the it. biggest. It's going to be the biggest thing on South by Southwest history. Why, why are you saying the biggest? I, I don't want anybody to be offended. We saying we are the biggest. Because that's how we feel. This is a belief I mean, system in that. What you want, what you want me to lie to you? I ain't going to lie to you. Shout out to Joe. But here's the thing, right? Like, we spoke about creating our own marketplace, creating our own platforms. Yeah, that's true in the crypto space. But we almost, it's looking at it like an inspiration, right? Like, that's what we've done with a media company. Like, we've started our own thing. We didn't see anybody doing what we were doing. And we're going to do the same thing in, in, um, in the NFT space and the crypto space as well. And that's why, we, you know, we, we saw 19 Keys and we're like, listen. This guy is part of the solution, mm. right? And so when we talk about Definitely. the biggest as far as EYL Network, there's a reason why, you know, we, we looked at him and said, look, we got to add him to our network. So I, I just want to talk about high-level conversations. His, uh, his show that's going to be debuting on yeah, our network uh, on the 19th of all, all days. It makes sense, March 19th. But that South by Southwest is is, is a, a activation, uh, kind of like how we did at Art Basel, where we brought together music, culture, fashion, education, technology all in the same place. And uh, we had the, the luxury of speaking to to, to TJ Khaled. Uh, we spoke to the, the team from FaZe Clan. We spoke to Sean, the Honorable Sean Barrow. 
Um, and so South by Southwest, it was just like, all right, this is another situation where we can combine all those things. They already have the media component. They have the music component. Shout out to our team at, at Ally and our United, United Master team. And we're going to do it again. Uh, so we're going to be talking about Web 3.0. We're going to be talking about NFTs and crypto. And we're also going to be talking about the economy and stocks. Uh, and then, obviously, the music component, we're going to be highlighting that as well. We got Toby um, coming up and pulling up on us, and he's going to be performing. And can we talk about who we're going to be interviewing? Yeah, it's a, it's a unique situation that we've been able to curate kind of a Marvel universe of financial literacy and, um, you know, and give them, you know, platforms and empower them. Like, you know, nobody heard about Wall Street Travel before he came on. You know, um, whether it's Ian Dunlap, Master Investor, you know, we have the opportunity to bring 19 Keys up here. So, you know, it's our obligation to not just be selfish and, and keep our, our resources to ourselves, but to actually help because these people actually have information that they taught us. He was the first person that taught, told me about NFTs. Um, so, you know, it, it's only right that we, we share that platform and that's what we're doing South by Southwest, you know, the first time ever we're going to put Wall Street Trap and Ian Dunlap on stage together. Ooh. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's going to be dope. We got John Henry, who we invested in his company. Shout out to John. Uh, we're going to be interviewing, we're going to be talking to Bun B and he's going to be performing. Oh, DJ yeah. Michael Watts is going to be DJing, uh, Toby Wigway. Um, the hottest independent artist, one of the hottest artists, period. So, you know, that's what, that's what it's about for us, man. Just kind of pushing the limits, doing things that's never been done before. And especially like you think about financial literacy, it's like, you know, we really just baking, breaking the, the boundaries of what you thought financial literacy was. Like yeah. whether we go to London, 2,000 people out there in London. And now we, we did South by uh, South, we're doing <laughs> South by Southwest and yeah. we got a bunch of other stuff. So it's a, for us, it's like you're going to get to see us in real time get a billion dollar valuation. Yeah. And it's like, I remember when I first came here, I said like world dominance is what is what we focused on. Since then we went to Egypt, we went to Nigeria, we went to Jamaica, we went to London, we just shut down London, 2000 people, no lie. So what I'm, what I'm saying now is that when you, 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 you saw BET, but you didn't see it in real time. Like mm -hmm. they saw us start in his dining room with two iPhones, they saw that. So now they're going to actually see step by step how we get, we're going to get $2 billion valuations. We're going to get a billion dollar valuation for EYL and we're going to get a billion dollar valuation for EYL University. And we're going to build both of those up and take them both public on the stock market. And the good thing about it is that you could actually see it. You get to see it happen in real time. It's like a documentary that you're actually watching in real Absolutely. time. So, you know, building out the media side and doing these events and things of that nature and traveling, it's all coordinated. Um, and and that's where we headed to that to that billion dollar valuation. Well, who's recording it so y'all can get a hundred million dollars from Netflix for the documentary? And oh, yeah, they yeah. right there. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's real life demonstration. Like you said, like a lot of the times, we grew up watching these things happen. Like we we watch businesses be built. Like you said, we watched BT. We watched we watched Puff do it with Sean John and with Bad Boy and, and with Ciroc. And it was like all right, but we didn't get the steps. And like I think the the advantage of this generation, like mm -hmm. what's happening now, is like transparency. They, the, the transparency right. of it. They seeing us every day. But before I leave, I, I have to give gratitude. Shout out to DJ Envy, who was a major inspiration for us. We kind of followed a lot of his blueprint. He was the first person that I, I actually saw that had thousands of people for financial literacy, and that was amazing to me. So that was definitely a motivation and inspiration for us. Mm -hmm. And he's the first person that came on our platform that was a real celebrity, um, and he came on Market Mondays also. And shout out to you. I'm very inspired by what you're doing in the media world. I look at you as one of the most influential people in the world, not just Absolutely. in our culture, in the world. Right. I don't even think I don't Thank even think you, you fully understand how influential you are. You're extremely influential. Yeah, what they say? Yeah, they we say in London, they, they say, look, like if Charlemagne does something, this city's sh shutting down. You Yo, come to London, and everybody so, has to come. Eighty, 80 percent of the people that we met in London said, "Yo, I and found this. you on the Breakfast Club." <laughs> wow. So yeah, your platform is extremely Bro. powerful. And uh, Angela Yee has always been doing her thing for years, and. First time I met her was in Detroit. She didn't get up when Not I, Chicago, Chicago, Chicago. I tried to shake her hand. She was sitting down, but it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. But she she's doing her thing for so long, and and just watching her growth as well has been extremely inspiring. From you know doing the, the juice bars to doing the financial literacy mm -hmm. thing on the world. So watching all of you guys come together and putting your ego aside and making this thing work because I know it's not easy working with each other yeah. for for this long is extremely inspiring for us to be in amongst presence of people that's in the radio hall of fame mm -hmm. that's something that's an extremely you know big accomplishment too many times in our community we we downplay our accomplishments to somebody dies nobody gets the recognition that they deserve yeah. until they die so just wanted to give your guys flowers while yeah. you're still yeah, living hall of fame and i hall hope y'all know how important y'all are too man you know <laughs> what i mean i love everything that y'all are doing y'all are so necessary like we've been waiting for this type of leadership in the black community 
culturally for a long, long, long time, man. So salute to y'all and always yeah, introducing absolutely. us to people like 19 yeah, 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 yeah. Good to meet you, brother. Yes, sir. And shout out yeah. to our Black Effect family, too. And, and shout out to and Black Effect. Shout out for the high level conversation partnership, man, because I've tried to partnership or I have partnered with black men for a long time, creating seven figure, eight figure businesses. And ego, of course, it's always comes down to what I want to do, who I am. So the ego, 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 and I've always said it's about the we go, what we do together. Mm. You understand me? And pulling up a seat at the table for each other and giving each other access because that's really how we make this thing go round. So, you know, when I want to do something, I get it done. But if I want to do more, I get a team. You understand me? And so that's why I can egolessly work with my brothers, you understand me, and build with them and they network because, like you said, I've been wanting to see this happen as well, trying to do it myself and then seeing these brothers pop up, you understand me, uh, like Suge and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> two, it's two Sugs, really. It wasn't like Suge. Two, two but I back. appreciate it, man, because we need to make sure we do more of that. Like, if there's any black men and women around the world, look at both of these blueprints, you understand me? And you can come together three to five like-minded individuals, because we often talk about unity, but it starts with the people around us, a few people. Because you're not going to be able to just get a thousand people to work together. If you can't work together with one person, what makes you think you can work together with five or ten? Mm -hmm. You understand me? And it has to be about the we go. It ain't about you sacrificing the currency to buy the life you want. You understand me? And without sacrifice, we can't build. So that's a thank you and an homage to my brothers as well and to the beauty of what y'all built here at this platform because i definitely been wanting to sit in and see for a while. You understand me and talk with my brothers and chop it up on a bigger platform. All right. Tell so, them where to find you, 19 Keys. They can find me at 19 Keys, 19 underscore Keys. It's a lot of fake profiles. Yeah, every out day there. you get a new one, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. You understand me? Uh, top thought leadership in the world, man. That's what I go by. Uh, you can find me on YouTube. You can find me on the EYL Network. High level conversations coming March 19th. I need a high level mental health conversation with my good brother Charlemagne the God. I'm we there. can go into depths of a lot of solutions that I have that our people need to participate in. I'm there. All right. Well, there you have it. It's 19 Keys, the brothers from Earn Your Leisure. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. 